So who in here wants to change the world? That's what most of us are here, right? And that's why I'm here today, to share with you why I've dedicated my life to performance activism and why I'm committed to share this with as many people as I can. For as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to do three things. I've wanted to dance and perform. I've wanted to teach and share with others what I learn. And I've wanted to create social change. I've wanted to help those that were less privileged than me. And these three things continue to shape who I am becoming today. As Dave said, I'm a dance maker and an improviser. And in the dances that I make, I try to challenge our ideas of what dance is, who gets to dance and why, where dance can happen, and in that way, create new and different experiences for my audience. On the other hand, I was born and raised in Colombia, and social dance has been a huge part of my life. I love social dancing. And that drew me to ballroom dance later on in life. And now I also perform and teach social dances. I also have the privilege to teach in a lot of different settings. I teach at the college level. I teach young children. I teach adults around the world in conferences. And I also now started developing and implementing my own programs through an organization I founded and now direct called Into Improv. This picture is taken right across the border in Ciudad Juarez, where we go every week and work with children in the periphery, and through improvised music and dance, create new possibilities for their lives with them. Now, for the past three or four years of my life, I've been extremely frustrated trying to figure out how all these different things came together. I felt that they didn't have anything in common. I felt that I was missing something, that I was not being true to some part of myself, that I had to stop doing one of them. And specifically, I was always questioning, how am I making a difference? How is choreographing a tango dance and performing it for a bunch of people going to make a difference? And this was very troubling for me. And I realized that I was focusing on the product, on what it is that I was doing. And yes, when I look at that, all these things, all these images I showed you, they have very little in common, if I focused on that. But then I made a shift, and that completely transformed and changed my life. I started focusing on the process, on how it is that I do what I do. Because performance activism has helped me learn that for social change to be possible, individuals need to grow, individuals need to develop, and that I could create spaces for development doing anything. So if I focus on the process, if I focus on how it is that I do what I do, all these activities become qualitatively the same. They are equally as transformative. I realized that the content is not what is important. That is the activity that makes a difference. And that is what performance activism looks at. And that's why I'm focused on that in my activism. Because it doesn't matter what you do, but it is how you do it that will make a difference. And this activity needs to be an activity that puts me in a position to be giving to be generous, to give of myself. It needs to be an activity that creates the developmental spaces for growth for everyone involved, including myself. And it needs to be an activity that gets, you, gets me out of the comfort zone. This is very important because we cannot create change unless we are ready to do things we do not know how to do. And I want to explore this with you in a short activity. So I want you to turn around to someone next to you. If there's no one next to you, turn someone behind you. And hopefully you've never met them, but if you have, just pretend for a second that you've never seen them. And we're going to do a very ordinary activity. We're going to introduce ourselves. You probably have done that several times throughout the course of today. You're going to tell them who you are, where you come from, what you do. And after a few seconds, I'll have you switch. The other person will get a chance. But before we start, I'm going to give you a performance direction. We are going to do this 
in gibberish. If you do not know what gibberish is, it's also known as a made-up language. So your performance, instead of sounding a little bit like, you're laughing already, I like this. So your performance, instead of sounding a little bit like this, hi, my name is Paola, I'm a dance maker, I work at UTEP, and so on and so forth, like we usually do, is going to sound a little bit more like this. And as your partner is telling you about their lives, you're going to be nodding in agreement, understanding every single little thing they're saying. You're going to be very supportive of that performance, because remember, you're going to do it next. So. <laughs> so go ahead and start, one of you. Go ahead. Start your introduction. Go ahead and switch if you haven't done so. The next person gets a chance. If not, continue your conversation. Okay, excellent. Let's give yourselves a round of applause. Great job. So what just happened? We took a very ordinary activity, something we do on a regular basis, but we changed how we did it. And it didn't matter that it was totally ridiculous. You still transformed the relationship with this person. You transformed the energy of the room. You were all laughing, you were leaning into each other, you were physically closer. And it was just because you changed it, changed the, the how. And notice that you were able to do it even though you did not know how to do that. If I would have told you when you came in that you were going to introduce yourself to someone in a made-up language, you would have said, yeah, right. And you did it, regardless of not knowing what you were doing. Because remember, to transform, to transform lives, it doesn't matter what we do, but what matters is how we do it. And this is very important for activism. I want to share with you who you've joined in these Jewish conversations, because they're happening everywhere around the world. From New York City, where inner-city youth are creating new conversations with the, the police officers, which we know how important that is. To the Amazon in Brazil, where indigenous communities are creating new conversations for their future. To international conferences around the world, where performance activists get together to create new performances, new ways of being, to then take to the respective countries to continue creating change. I have the privilege to be part of this international community, where we continue discovering and experiencing the developing power of performance. Performance allows us to be both who we are and who we are not at the same time. It allows us to be who we are becoming. So you're not only being Paola Lopez, but you're being Paola Lopez giving a TED Talk. And in the performance of that, you find that you're capable of doing things you did not know you were capable of doing. And when I talk about performance as an activist, I talk about performance in a very broad sense, not just as a performing art. But I actually talk about performance as something that we all have the capacity to do. And if you're sitting there going like, oh, no, not me, there's no way that I can do that, I'm not talented enough, I, I'm not young enough, I'm not pretty enough, I should have started when I was five, I want to challenge that. Because as, hum as humans, the human species is actually a performatory species. We are born and wired to play and perform. If you don't believe me, look at children. When children are at play, anytime you see a children, they're constantly playing, performing, pretending. They pretend to be mothers. They pretend to be doctors. They pretend to cook. They pretend to call someone on the phone. And they do this well before they're actually capable of doing it. And it's in the performing and pretending that they actually become it. Just like we heard earlier on, Amy's talk about the power poses. It's in that performance that we can actually become someone 
else. Now, as a performance artist, in my practice, I said I was an improviser, I have found out that all these transformative powers of performance are actually highlighted when the performance is improvised. So improvisation has become a huge cornerstone of my work. Improvisation teaches us to build with what is available, and that includes the good, the bad, and the ugly stuff of life. And we all know we have plenty of bad and ugly stuff. So we need to use that to build a different reality. And when we start relating to our life in this way, we realize that these labels drop, and we're just left with stuff to build with. And this allows us to stop relating to the things we don't like in life as problematic. So a disability, for example, stops being something that we need to fix, but it's a different starting point to build something new. This allows us to become more inclusive, more compassionate, more loving, which are qualities that are absolutely necessary for us to create a better world. The activity of improvisation is the activity of yes and. It's saying yes to life and building with it. And using that instead of what we usually do, which is say yes but. Yes but when I lose 10 pounds. Yes but when I get married. Yes but when I get a race. And we go through life putting roadblock after roadblock in front of each other instead of using those as building blocks to create together the life we want. So improvisation and performance are fundamental for activism because it's through improvising and performing that we grow. And we need to grow and we need to develop to be able to create change. And we can do so through improvising and performing because we can be giving, we can create developmental spaces for growth, and we can get out of our comfort zones. And yes, it will be uncomfortable, because you will not know what you're doing. But remember that for change to be possible, we need to know how to get out of our comfort zones and try something that we do not know yet how to do. And trust me, if you do this, even if you don't, if you, even if you don't know what you're doing, but if you're being giving and you're being generous and you're creating spaces for people to grow in, I guarantee you, you're going to make a difference. You're going to make change. Because remember, it is not what we do, but how we do it that makes a difference. And that is activism. So I want to leave you with an image and an invitation. This is me. And throughout this process, I've become very familiar with my comfort zone. And I know I'm not special. We all have it, we carry it with us, and we like to live our lives in this zone. As a performance activist, I have learned that social change necessitates people, groups of people, entire societies to get out of their comfort zones. And that needs to start with you. It needs to start with me. Because it's not until we move away out of our, the comfort zone that we can see all these new performances, new possibilities that we can create with others around us. So I want to invite you to every day take a step to get out of your comfort zone. And to do so despite that uncomfortable feeling of not knowing what you're doing. Because after five years of doing this work, I have realized I still do not know what I'm doing. <laughs> and that if I'm lucky, I never will. Thank you.